for this. Hey everybody out there, my name is Joseph Goodman. This is The Political Pulse. It's great to have you guys with us today. It is a glorious 5.32. Ah, oh, two minutes late. I apologize for that. Um, the interns, you know, we're gonna have to file them. We're gonna have to let them go. Anyhow, folks, I'm joined today with two good friends of mine, um, Harry Graver. Harry Graver, you've been on the show once before, haven't you? Regrettably, yeah. <laughs> you, no, have, you have been, saved, you have been saving it. that little quip. <laughs> I have Regret so many in my back pocket for the next 20 minutes. Just a roll the next. Yeah. But Harry, mm -hmm. you're not the only guest that we have here. This is a monumental occasion. Sure. Because today we're joined by not one guest, but two. We're hoping for twice the amount of viewers. Elena, how you doing? Hi, Joseph. I'm doing well. Oh, that's perfect. So, joining me today are two lovely people, two young conservative Yaleys. It's true. It's very true. Before we begin, this is a tradition that we have on the show, all right? Oh, and Harry, you know this. We always ask the same question when you come on the show, who is your favorite president? Now, Harry, we'll begin with you, just because you've already answered this question before. Has it changed since a month and a half ago? Is it that long ago? Maybe. I think oh, it was, yeah. It's still Calvin Coolidge. It is still Calvin Coolidge. Okay, um, what about you, Elaine? Dwight D. Eisenhower. Dwight D. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, so, Harry, we've talked, to, we've talked to you before. This is not really your day, all right? You're just here more as, like, a, as, a, as a cheerleader. For it's the co-host. It's the background. You are not a co-host, <laughs> Harry. You are not a co-host. Define gender norms. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight D. Eisenhower. Okay, why is that? I mean, he was a pretty good president, I would agree. Yeah, I, I would say that under Eisenhower's presidency, the one good thing government has ever produced came out of him, and that was the interstate highway system. Ah, of 1956. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know my history. So, <laughs> okay. Um, he also liquidated a stalemated war in, Korean, in Korea, and immediately after, no American died in combat during his presidency. That is true, and I think he's a... Is he the only president that can brag about that? Since, likely... I would say one of the very right. few. Um, but very Donna. interesting. And, and that is the first Dwight D. Eisenhower that we've had on the show. Do you know that Shannon Connors came on the show the week after you and said Calvin Coolidge? Right. So right now, the tally goes of all the guests that have come on. Two for Calvin Coolidge, mm -hmm. one for Abraham Lincoln, one for Dwight D. Eisenhower. So we'll be Zero for Barack Obama. And zero for Barack Obama. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say Barack Obama. And one for Barack Obama. <laughs> um, <laughs> a shocker. Um, but also, so that is the traditional question that we have on the show. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I announced this on Facebook earlier today that the political post we hear, uh, a staff of exactly one, I fired the interns since I began this show, um, are, 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 gonna, are we holding a competition once every week, actually. We'll be asking one history question for all those viewers out there. So this is an incentive to tune in now and not <laughs> wait for the YouTube um, upload later. Of, and the winner of this question, the person who can answer this first, the person who can get to the comment board on WYBCX. You had a great commenter last week. Harry. <laughs> Harry, that, the, Harry Graver commented last week <laughs> on the <that> show. <laughs> who are you impersonating? Some old, it was, it was a confused, oldie? confused old man <laughs> who, who had was stumbled upon pretty bitter this. about a number of Harry, things. Harry, what do you do with your life? Yeah, what, <laughs> I, just, it's, I think it's clear coming on this show twice, twice. that my Monday afternoons are... Way too free. Ladies and gentlemen, for the record, Harry begged me to come on this show. Oh. Okay, he, he has been begging I me. And I have, I have a phone second. call from midnight. <laughs> not, last Harry, night. we are not playing that. We are not playing that. Um, but so yes, as I said, a competition. Every week we're going to be asking the ladies and gentlemen out there a history question. The first person that can get back to me and say I know the answer and get it correct. We are not looking for wrong answers out there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We'll get. Um, what's the prize, you guys? Well, I mean if. If you're going to pay for it with your parents' money, essentially like returning it to the people most likely answering the question, it pretty much be anything. <laughs> so, you're, assuming, so, you're assuming my parents can answer the question. Yeah, whatever your mom would like, probably the most. Um, okay. <laughs> um, what do you think? What do you, uh, you know, you know, uh, rule. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna allow my parents to answer this question. Okay. Well, what should the prize be? I think a book is always a, book? a solid. I'm not prize. paying for a book. You're not paying for anything. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so what, what, any book? I got it. Barry Goldwater's The mm. Conscious oh of a gosh. Conservative. That's in my backpack do right you like, now. Really? Do you it's like that fantastic. book? Great book. Yeah. It, I read that book a few years ago. Um, and pretty much pretty sane stuff until, what do they call The last chapter? The, 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 the crack, the cocaine chapter? Because he goes about and talks about just blowing up the USSR. Right? Mm. Isn't it? Yeah? Well. <laughs> okay. Here's a history question. We'll get to you guys. Do you know worry. who actually wrote 
conscious it's, of a conservative? Not, that I'm could be a history that, question. You, does, should that be the perfect? <laughs> okay, why not? I know, I know, no, I but know. you can't answer because you've been already rewarded by being invited on the show. Mm. Okay, that so, is your reward. That's why I reward the next Ladies, <laughs> 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 My time here is done. <laughs> okay, so let's. Shall that be the question, Harry? Sure. Okay, the first person who can answer this: Who actually wrote Barry Goldwater's "The Conscious of a Conservative"? Perfect. The first person that can answer that gets a free back massage. What? That's kind of creepy. A disincentive, perhaps. A, okay, <laughs> I haven't told you who the a back free, massage is. A free back massage and a talk with your dean. <laughs> <laughs> Complimentary included. Simultaneous <laughs> talk and back massage with the dean of your trust. No, oh, let's say let's say a, a, a let's say a, a five dollar perfect, a Greek bond. A right. Greek treasury bond. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, people are going to like that? No, uh, let's say $5 for okay. the first person that can answer that. Who is the first person? Who, who is it? Who, who wrote With the author. <laughs> who's really who's struggling through this prize. Who is, who is the author of yeah. Bagel Waters, The Conscious of a Conservative? Let's see if anyone has run, run over to the comment board. <laughs> um, nope. Nope. Nobody else. Okay. So, guys, thank you once again. So, let's, let's enough Does of the that question. Mean I can answer it. Do, can I no, get not yet. <laughs> no. We want we want to encourage people to do yeah. a bit of research on their own. Um, that's really what the the, the the political pulse is all about. Is get it's inspiring people to just become more active, um, mm. in life. I mean that actually makes a pretty good transition. If we're going to talk about activism, let's talk about conservative activism. Oh, wasn't that a great transition? Did you see what I did there? That's why they pay me the, the big bucks, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think you're gentlemen. supposed to announce it. Yeah, but I you can, can go announce with it. it. I, I'm going to go with it. <laughs> Let's talk about activism, all right? Conservative activism here at Yale. Okay. How are you guys con active within the, um, as conservatives here? Who wants to go first? Harry, she's pointing to you. you um, want to answer? Sure. Don't be nervous. You're doing great so far. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I am a member of the conservative party of the Yale Political Union. Shocker. Uh, yeah. I am a member of the William F. Buckley program. What do they do? William F. Buckley Program is an organization dedicated to intellectual diversity at Yale. Um, I, 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 was, I was laughing at it. That wasn't a laugh. I was laughing at the, the joke record. I heard like a few weeks ago. Yeah, continue. Um, um, <laughs> so at, as I was saying. Um, yeah. So that is a combination between internship opportunities, speaker series, workshops. What kind of speakers so, have you had? Who was the best speaker that came on? I think Does Dr. William Mike F. Buckley come on? Was probably. That's distasteful. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> um I think Governor Huckabee was probably the best. Speaker. Oh yeah, he came. I actually went that to that. Was, that was really great. great. He had this. We've had like great small events as well. Yeah, um, a lot of people came to that Huckabee thing. Sure, we uh, turned a lot of people away. Uh, yeah, there's people. There was a very strong fire violation. No, Huckabee said, uh, Governor Huckabee, excuse me, um, said something really, really funny. Uh, what did he say? He said, as he entered the the Q and A session, what did mm -hmm. he say? He said, for most people, the Q and A session is question and answer, but for politicians, we all know that it's question and avoidance. Uh, I like that. Bum, 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 bum. Um, okay, so you do a bit of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Elena, what kind of things do you do? I, you just recently wrote a column in the YDN that, ladies and gentlemen, was actually published in the National Review. I've been dying to get something published in the National Review. Great journal. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, do you subscribe? I do. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, but you got it published. Congrats to you. Ah, thank um, you. So this is your reward for, for <laughs> that. Um, okay. <laughs> so what, what, what did you talk about in this in, in this journal and in, in this magazine I talked about what I believe to be the real war on women um, so sort of like the dialogue pervading America right now <coughs> excuse me is about how um, the GOP is waging a war on women you know this is all stemming from like Sandra Fluke and Rush Limbaugh yeah. Rush Limbaugh calling Sandra Fluke a, Fluke a slut for her belief that government should um, provide contraception under health insurance and I think this title, The War on Women, is um, pretty hyperbolic. And I think we all have to step back and sort of look at actually what entails a real war on women. And so I kind of draw from um, sort of like anecdotes in the Middle East where women have to avoid honor crimes from their husbands, um, civil rights violations everywhere in the Middle East. And then here we're going to try to say that the fact that government won't give us free contraception is a war on women. I. I I think it, if it's an issue you feel you need to fight for, that's fine. But don't call it a war on women because we just look ignorant. No, um, and and as we said, this was published in the, the National Review, and you got quite a quite a lot of feedback. Good I did. feedback. I did. Um, from kids here at Yale. 
Um, and so, so we have a lot of. I mean, but Yale is a pre predominantly liberal campus, though, isn't it? So I've heard. Um, so I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what is it like being? I mean, just you're in the minority, and we talked a bit about this, Harry. Um, but just as conservative women, um, just I mean, what what? I, my question here is, where, <laughs> my interns, they did not prepare me for this. Uh, what, how is it um, being a conservative woman here on campus? It, it, it's tough in that you have sort of this stereotype like provided by the writers of Elle magazine that conservative women are the ungrateful daughters mm. of feminism, which is just completely ridiculous to me. But you sort of come on campus, as I think any conservative person does, with like this stereotype are already attached to you. But I think what's so great about being a conservative woman is that you have to be on your game all of the time. Whereas a liberal woman, mm. I feel, or any liberal, can sort of fall back in the echo of the crowd and doesn't really have that same need to defend their views as best they can and learn all they can about it. But when you're conservative, people are going to call you out on anything faulty that you say, and you have to be prepared for that. So it's kind of like the survival of the fittest, just because, for example, Harry, you're from New York City. Right. A liberal bastion. In the Upper West Side of New York City. Exactly. So which means that, you know, every time you're confronted by a liberal, yeah. they're all around you. They're there ambushing you. It means you have to be on your guard. I, I think that, by and large, um, conservatives who are public about being conservative are more well-informed. Um, and, and I don't think that... That's not necessarily like an ideologically loaded statement as much as um, by necessity. Um, being constantly... Almost as like this intellectual circus animal that is like prodded mm. and examined and like wheeled out to like look upon. You have to know your stuff. Um, I think conservative women, I assume, especially just a, it's a, a minority of a minority, um, especially on campus. Yeah, and and I think Ann Coulter once said that she blames women actually for every time a Republican has lost um, since since women were granted the right to vote. Um, 80, 90 years ago, because women vote liberally, um, and if you actually do the math... I think she says that satirically. Yeah, obviously. Uh, I should, perhaps I should have made that bit. I, 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 I should have prefaced it. She was joking. Um, but you're absolutely right, that women are, are, are more liberal than men are generally, and so conservative women are a minority um, of a minority there. Well, I think uh, several women, liberal women especially, confuse what exactly a pro-woman stance is hmm. on issues. Um it's very troubling to me that um, liberals parade the, the pro-life, pro-choice divide. Like, if you don't vote pro-choice, then you're anti-woman. Uh, being for abortions is not a pro-woman stance. Yep. And it's very uh, sad to me for people who call it otherwise. The same thing with contraception. A vote against that is not saying that It's not a vote against women. Your, it's not a vote against women. It's not, for me, it's not a vote um, saying that I hate my body. It, it's nothing like that. And I... You know, uh, unfortunately, liberals can get away with saying things like that. Not on this show, no longer. Not on this show. So let's talk a bit more about uh, your conservatism. Mm -hmm. um, the, le the Republican primaries, right? They've been going on for, oh my God, a year now? I think probably more. Probably, yeah. I mean, when, when did they all announce their candidacy? Well, Mitt Romney's campaign's been going on for seven years. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. oh. <coughs> Poor guy if he doesn't win. Um, but... So let me ask you about this. Who, who, where are you guys coming? Mm -hmm. Who, who are you supporting right now? Where, where, who appeals to you? Where do your sympathies lie? I'm still really tempted to write in Tim Pawlenty, um, who would have been a great candidate. Yeah, I mean, why miss him? From the great state of Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is nothing. If you're, there is nothing. Do you more think that if he gruesome. had stuck in, he could have seen so. a late surge like Centorum? I, no, I, th I think there's something. You America will not elect a president who can't tell a punchline. And there was nothing more gruesome. It's kind of ironic because it's T-Paw. Okay, maybe not. Paw punches. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. Oosh. <laughs> Oosh. <laughs> Ooh, well, the comment board is blowing up. Was a bad <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking of public personalities not telling well a punchline. Oh, Harry, um, you're so kind. Uh, um, but um, now there's this gruesome video online of Tim Pawlenty <laughs> trying to talk about Lady Gaga with three 20-somethings. And it is probably like the first real moment to the end of his political career um <laughs> that's where the hipsy books but, will identify. Wait, wait, wait. i i want to comment on this right and thing because i think that's wait do you want to 
counter and, and yes, I do. <laughs> oh my, ladies and because gentlemen, let's have a real fight here. All right, I, yeah, fight. I think the idea of a Republican putting uh, writing in a candidate is incredibly irresponsible. Um, it, it, I sort of parallel it with people who say, oh, I'm a conservative, I'm not a Republican, and I'm going to frame my vote as such. I, I think that's incredibly irresponsible. So you wouldn't write in Tim Pawlenty? I would not write in anybody. You're, you're against writing in. No, I, no, 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 no. It's not, it's not. Did I miss I, I, I Milani just there? I don't have This a, is this, the, this liberal well, Harry, gotcha gonna journalism, Joseph. Harry, we're going to let him. I, 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 I have yeah. nothing against <laughs> writing in a candidate as sort of like an idea. But as crucial as November is, the idea that you're not going to, if you're conservative and conservatively inclined, the idea that you're not going to support whoever the candidate is, is something I think incredibly irresponsible. Oh, I'll support the I, I will love to support the nominee. I will vote for whoever the nominee is. Bar the Republican none. nominee. Bar none. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Santorum, you would vote for? Yes. What about you? I, I, I will vote for any Republican who any receives Republican. the nomination. Any Republican? I may not vote for Ron Paul over Barack Obama. But Interesting. Why is that? Why would you vote Why would you vote for Ron, uh, Obama over Ron Paul, but not I Obama mean, over Santorum? Almost exclusively on the Iranian issue. And I think that... He, he's not strong enough on Iran? Ron Paul? Ron Paul. No. I don't think he would say that he's strong enough. I think that... That's pretty much like a what is what is, for the for the less educated folk out Ron, there. Ron what is Paul is an isolationist who believes that essentially just operating on the principle that we will mess up more things than we prevent by intervening. It's not against our national interest really for Iran to have a nuclear weapon, um, and we have no business fighting. But he would let war. it happen. Yes. Okay. Easy. What about you? How do you feel about that? I I, mean, I, not, I not, not necessarily I, about the Iran issue. I, but, I sympathize uh, with that argument, but I I would never vote um, against Ron Paul. Were okay, that that's, that was what I was asking. So Ron Paul for you would still be better. Um, and why hasn't he dropped out? It just seems to Ron me that Paul. yeah, he's getting like what low double. Low, it's, it's his last time. I mean, he's been running since. Late. So Mitt Romney's been running for seven years. He's been running for twenty. Years. Twenty. He's but the comeback a... year for so many. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, but this is his last. Cha- I mean, the thing is, he's running for an in- like an intellectual campaign, and mm. this is the last time he'll probably run before Rand does, because Rand won't win election in Kentucky, a re-election in Kentucky, and then he'll just take the libertarian. Rand's gonna banner. run in a few years. That's usually that seems to be. Me. My insiders tell me that. Your insiders. My, Share my, your insiders with my, me, my Harry. I don't know who these insiders are. They were all your interns. <laughs> yeah, and you've been. Get out of here. They're I never. Co- they will never work here again. <laughs> it's pretty clear. Yeah. So, so if you set up your own rival show, <laughs> um, you know, not Mondays at five thirty, but Mondays at five. You know, John yeah. Stewart, Stephen Colbert style, they can all work for you. you right. Know, you'll, you'll help Obama pick up the slack of unemployed. Because the uh, like the vegan <laughs> bongo hour, right, which comes <laughs> <laughs> <up> next. <laughs> but what? I'm sorry, I'm a bit sick, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, do not blame me if you come away from this show sick. Um, but what, what about Centaurum appeals to you? Uh, is it his vest? Does it, is it his vest? I like the sweater vest. What about you? I don't know I, I'm not opposed to the sweater vest. You're not, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you, you're, you're pretty neutral when it comes to the sweater vest. Yeah? I'd, uh, I'd say so. so. Why, but why do you like him? Well, I... I don't know if I like him as much as Harry does, but um, I, I like him in that he's sort of champion, championing. Where are you from exactly? I, Just candidate-wise. N- n- where geographically wise? Oh, I'm sorry, Alabama. Alabama, okay, and he won in Alabama. He did, did he? win yeah. Alabama, um, much to the chagrin of many. Um, uh, okay, so you actually support Mitt Romney over him? I, I'm just trying I to do. get a sense here. We're mm-hmm. running a Gallup poll, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. but you support Mitt Romney. I do. Um, and. My reasoning behind that is not um, something I think that is lacking in Santorum. I think Santorum um, would be a fantastic president. I really do. But you really I, think he'd be? Fantastic? I really do. Um, really? Uh, one reason being um, that I think he has the ability to instill like values back into our country. And but but the, the unfortunate thing about that is moral values will never win an election in this country. And I, I would venture to say that if they could, there would never be another Democrat so, as president. <laughs> so what moral values <laughs> does Santorum have that, for example, a pretty moral guy like Barack Obama doesn't have? I, mean, I just think like an unwavering respect for tradition. That's a tough premise, also for your question. I don't know if he's like an unwa- uh, 
Would you not agree? I mean, I think Barack, no. Barack Obama is still. I mean, I'm inspired by Barack Obama's yeah. morality. He's a, he's a good father. By his speechwriter. <laughs> <laughs> by his teleprompter. Um, but so Santorum and his respect for tradition is what appeals to you. Okay, Harry, do you have anything? I think that you want to cut in. I, I think that there is a bluntness to Santorum that hurts him as a candidate and hurts him as now the standard bearer for. I think what is a much more deep-rooted conservatism than Mitt Romney. Like, Mitt Romney is a technocrat. He is a philosophically kind of moderate, government-oriented guy, um, who I really don't think even the most devout Mitt Romney supporters would say he's a conservative. I think that you look at him and he's, he's fiscally, he's like fiscally conservative and he's electable. Um, I don't think, I mean, I think that social issues- Is Santorum electable? Yes. He, you really I think, think Santorum I think, could I think, beat Barack Obama? I, I think honestly You don't that think he's going to scare away the independents? Santorum, I don't... I actually think that Santorum's more electable than Romney. And the reason I say this is... I disagree. Issues... I'm loving this decision. Don't worry, you'll get there's your chance. Nothing, there's nothing inspirational about Mitt Romney. Um, I'm not inspired by Santorum. I think that... No, but, but he's, you're not the audience. Okay. Um, I think that Santorum polls a lot better with independents in swing states because I think Santorum speaks to a national... He speaks to a cultural identity, a cultural identity which won, by the way, in 2004. George Bush, George Bush campaigned on values and social issues and won the election. But um, are values more important than solutions? Because they're not. Those I think values terms. are the foundation for solutions. Okay, let's talk about this. Because for me, I feel like it's really about the numbers a lot of the time. No, I mean, like, okay, because okay, it's great that Santorum has these values for sure. But values are like they're so fluff, they're fluffy. I, I I have a great respect for tradition, for the free market, for de- these sound like slogans. I want to know specifically what a president, what a Santorum presidency would look like, and I, I just don't know if he. I don't. I just I like the fact that Barack Obama is like more more of a pol- <laughs> what. You I mean, could, if, if you repeat adjectives in like <laughs> a lofty tone, it doesn't it make them sounds. immediately <laughs> insubstantial. Like, but but I mean like how would okay so give me how would. Santorum's values translate into solutions to America's problems. Um, Harry? I think that, so there's two ways in which to look at it. Yeah. The first is from, if you want to look at it from a legislative manner. I mean, this is not to say that someone who prides himself or at least is branded as a value candidate just throws his hands up to the, on economic and foreign policy issues. I think the Wall Street Journal is, favors um, Santorum's economic plan to Romney's, first of all. Um, what is his economic plan? Just give me the bullet points? In, if, if, if you want the bullet points, it's just very supply-side oriented spending cuts and tax cuts. Okay. Bottom line. There's nothing revolutionary all right. there. Um, the same Reaganomics that have failed right. over the past. Yeah. No. I said, uh, you just uh, said, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh, you got, uh, got you, Harry. That's really <laughs> the reason we brought you back. Just so I could somehow trap you. Um, but the, I think the more important part is that, and, 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 and Barack Obama has done this fantastically to with his own, I think, goals of sort, um, is that the president is emblematic of a cultural statement. And I think that if you look at a lot of our economic problems and a lot of our kind of national social problems as at their root cultural problems, then conservatives do turn to someone like Santorum, who embodies kind of a set of truths and ideals that are primary for the day-to-day American life. And especially when you believe the day-to-day American life shouldn't be shifted by kind of a government-oriented plan. That's the inspiration that I think Santorum has. Romney's empty. I don't think even Mitt Romney kind of, sorry, I don't think even <laughs> Mitt Romney, like, brands himself as inspirational. He brands himself as effective. Yeah, like, he's a, a, he's a great consultant. But I, I can't remember anyone ever electing someone kind of like, like Mitt Romney. Lena, do you have anything to add to that? I, I do agree in that I, I feel like a strong moral code throughout the country is going to be the necessary primer for any legislative action we take. I don't care how numbers-oriented it is. That's just the way it works. Unfortunately, I don't think that that can win an election, and I'm not sure that come November people will recognize that. I think were he to win on a different platform and then sort of like go off on this social value oriented message people would understand once he already was president but i don't think that that can be sort of 
the thing that lifts him over Barack Obama. I think come election time, the middle class is going to want to see their paychecks raised. Right. They're going to want jobs. It's going to be issues all based on very sort of like practical, in-the-moment concerns. And so then how is cutting taxes on the wealthy, mm-hmm. which we know doesn't really work economically, how is that also even moral? Um, since you said it in the premise of your question, I assume it's totally correct and accepted now. <laughs> Um, that what? Tax that cut, tax I mean, cuts we, don't simulate an economy. Uh, well, Joseph, I, well, they, I would they, say they, tax, they, tax cuts are not what sh- we should be focusing on. Spending is the problem. Okay. Tax cuts are not... What kind of spending? Spending on like, is Medicare welfare not programs. Mo- for spending. Okay, but Medicaid, Medicare, these are moral things. Which Why? The, because I not think... Not to turn around too much. No, 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 please do. Uh, why, is it impo- why is Medicare a, a moral program? Because I think that 70-year-olds who don't have a job should be looked after because they don't have a means of supporting themselves otherwise. I think so and you touch on a larger idea here, and I think this is where you see the difference between the Obama like when you say like, Obama's like a moral guy and center it's not that these are wrong statements, but we're speaking a different language. I think that when okay. uh, I'm speaking English, you're speaking Well you're English. you're looking at morality in the language okay. of I, I think you're looking through the lens of a state and then you're evaluating morality on very material levels. I think the interesting element of the Santorum candidacy, it's a, it's a referendum on what is a metric for a moral country. Is it the standard of living by like, the, like at the church of median income? Or is it something with, I think as Santorum phrases it, a centrality of faith? And that's an interesting referendum. But how are they mutually exclusive? Why can't I give the 75-year-old his Social Security paycheck? There's not, and, and no candidate besides Ron Paul wants to do that. You want you want do you want to say anything? Uh, uh, Harry's right. There is no candidate who sort of wants to scrap all but New Deal. Let programs. me tell you what I think is immoral: being irresponsible. Mm-hmm. And I think which uh, is what I think excessive government spending on entitlement programs. Sure, but is. what I also oh. think is what I also think is, <laughs> <laughs> what I also think is irresponsible though is not recognizing the need to. Uh oh, maybe we do actually have to raise taxes once in a while. That is irresponsible, making it immoral. We have to raise taxes on. People who are only paying 50% like Mitt Romney. And if you don't raise taxes on them, then paying back the deficit is going to have to come from somewhere else. You're, that can either come from raising taxes on the middle, co- yeah. middle or by cutting people. You can, you can You're look. looking at this through the wrong lens. I didn't mean to cut you off. Reagan raised taxes. I, times, nobody, yeah. nobody argues that um, raising taxes on its own is just a horrible thing, but you have to look That's at it true. in Plenty the con. Actually do argue I, that. Could I speak, please? You have to look <laughs> at it in context with spending levels. <clears throat> yeah. Cutting taxes and keeping your spending at the same level, of course, that's not going to work. That's why any Republican candidate who calls for a cut in taxes is coupling it with a de- decreased spending program. Yeah. You can't reform one without checking absolutely, the other. Absolutely, absolutely. You can liquidate the, the numbers show that you can liquidate. And Warren Buffett, the top 5%, Warren Buffett's secretary, literally take every asset they've ever touched and you don't touch the spending problem. It's, it's, it's a false narrative. It's, it, it's, it's forcing a false choice. Right, but where I'm standing is that you have to do a bit of both. I just feel that people that are signed on to Grover Norquist's pledge, but for this example... Is like, this is like telling a heroin addict, like, listen, I realize you need to stop doing heroin, but know what? Maybe you should cut out the carbs also. It's an irrelevant issue. Will they probably be better off if they stop eating so many carbs? Maybe. But it totally misses the big issue of they're destroying themselves with heroin. If that analogy makes any sense at all. Okay, I'm going to have to think about that. And we also have to leave. <laughs> I just feel, I'm going to end off with this. I just feel that, you know, when you have close to 200 Republicans who have signed this pledge not to raise taxes. It's a good pledge. It's not a good pledge <laughs> because you can't govern on a pledge. And yes, we need to cut. But we also have to need to raise. I think it has to be more of cut and less of raise. But you have to do both. Till and next I think time. Republicans <laughs> refusing to do that, and I'm going to I'm just going to cut off right at this. Republicans <laughs> refusing to do that, I think, is irresponsible and perhaps not the most moral thing. Um, I think <laughs> Democrats, or I think Republicans would counter and say that Democrats are irresponsible and not cutting their part. <laughs> well, listen, guys, it is 6 p.m. Uh, 6:01. In fact, we have wow. to leave. Um, but this was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys, so much for coming Thanks on. For us. Thank you so um, much, ladies and gentlemen. This was Harry Graver and Elena Plot. My name is Joseph Goodman. This was the Political Pulse. Have a great evening.